Good morning, guys. I gotta still be a little bit quiet because Allison's sleeping, but I figured for today's video, I would do something a little bit different for you. I figured it would be kind of cool to do like one of those day in the life videos where I just take a whole bunch of clips from my day and show you guys what my day to day life is all about. Good morning, barn cats. <laughs> oh. Barn cats left me a present. It's usually Lil Barn Cat. For those of you not familiar with our farm, we have about 160 acres here in Northern Vermont. I've been working on trying to establish this farm now for a couple of years. I've been living full time here for just a little bit over a year. Right now, the farming enterprises we have here are, we have a like startup orchard. It's about six and a half acres, about 600 trees. Uh, chestnuts, elderberry, mulberry, apple, uh, Siberian pea shrub, black locust. We also have a small duck operation where we raise ducks for meat and eggs. And we have a brand new attempt at raising geese for meat. None of those enterprises provides a living enough for us to be able to live off of the farm income full time right now. My dream is that that will be the case someday. Uh, but until then, we're just sort of working hard, trying to get things established, while also working day jobs. As far as feed for the animals go, in the summer months, so I really only give the ducks, you know, one container of sunflower seeds each morning. I don't even bother to feed the geese because they eat grass, which is the beauty of the geese. At night, I feed the ducks and the geese some grain. Uh, so that type of stuff. I'm getting kind of low, so one of the things I'm going to have to do today is go to the feed store out in uh, St. Johnsbury, Vermont. So yeah, that's uh, 52 gallons of water right there. Good morning, geese legs! Good morning, geese legs. Come on out, everybody out. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I notice when they get out in the mornings, they love to flap their wings and jump around. <laughs> it's pretty gosh darn adorable. They're domestic geese, so they're too big and heavy and don't have the right muscle development to fly away, but they love to bounce around. So they've been in this paddock area here that you can see fenced in for just about a week now. And uh, they've pretty much mowed down all of the grass. I move the, the little houses every single day. So, you know, you can see here where there's like a really heavy concentration of, of geese droppings or manure. You know, it starts here and they move out that way. So one of the things I've got to do today is I've got to set up a new paddock over there. So move them down further towards the orchard. But before I do that, let's go. Release the cracking! <laughs> you two are always the slowest ones out. Get out of there. Out you go, out you go. You're so graceful. Generally speaking, 
thinking at this time of year we keep our ducks just sort of free range. They wander the pasture looking for bugs and grubs and worms and slugs and snails and all that good stuff. And like I said, I really don't have to feed them much this time of year because they're getting most of their diet from the natural world here. But the ducks sure do love their sunflower seeds. There you go, guys. Boy. Let's go do our egg count. Here's a stray egg. Here's another stray egg. Usually I try to get them to lay in these pseudo nesting boxes I've created. Here's two more. All right, that looks like a total of eight eggs we got here. We have 10 ducks that lay eggs. Um, and there's one that always seems to drop her egg much later than the rest of the group and so i'll probably find it out there in the pasture we usually sell the duck eggs to people in our local area friends oftentimes i'm also selling the duck eggs uh to people for hatching purposes people really like the khaki campbells uh, those are our brown ducks right there they're they're very prolific egg layers and so uh that's why they're often so popular you know people often ask if they can buy ducks from us and we can't really sell you ducks if you don't live in our area. Um, there's some companies that do mail order ducklings. We're just not set up to do that. But what we can do is sell people hatching eggs and they can order those from us. Uh, can actually go through our website. Oh boy, look at this. I've got some hungry barn cats on my hand. You want food, don't you, Lil? You brought me that bird and now you want food. No, oh, I know Pablo wants food. <laughs> That's for darn sure. barn cats are a bit more pampered than the average barn cat. They are basically our pets. I don't feed them a ton. Just enough to keep them civilized. Here you go, guys. Alright, let's go check on the ducklings. Good morning, ducklings. How you doing? Huh? So these ducklings are about, uh, just about four weeks old. So the two brown ones are khaki Campbells. The two white ones are Pekins. Maybe when it warms up, I'll bring you outside. How about that? You guys would like that, wouldn't you? Those ducklings are still too small to, to actually spend all day, night outside. I usually keep them inside at night and I put them out for a little bit, usually in this little chicken tractor that's meant for the geese, but I haven't needed it yet for the geese. Um, I will put the ducklings in there. While we keep the grass around the farm nice and trim, you know, like right around here, you'll also notice that a lot of it's getting really tall. Some people have asked me if I do that because I'm just lazy and it's not exactly it, but it's a little bit of it. Um, part of the reason I keep the grasses so long here is because the longer grasses and wildflowers are great for nesting birds and pollinators. And for the land that I'm not trying to use for agriculture right at this moment, I'm happy to use it for wildlife. Now usually when I move the fences though, I, use, I will take my uh, pull behind brush hog that I pull behind the ATV and cut the fence line. If the grass is too tall, it'll short out the electric fence and make it not effective in both keeping the birds inside and predators outside. But unfortunately, the uh, pull behind brush hog isn't working right now and it's off being repaired and so that means I'm gonna have to do this job the old-fashioned way. Whew. 
I suppose I could have used the ATV to flatten down a uh, uh, track to put the fencing up in, but I don't know. I think I like using the scythe. There's something kind of nice about the birds in the background and enjoying nature and its purest element and just cutting down the grass human powered like, you know? And it's not like my tubby keister couldn't use the extra cardio, so. Now it's time to go move the uh, chicken tractors. <laughs> Okay, the chicken tractors are in place. Let's go get the geese. We're going to fresh pasture, guys. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Fresh pasture. You got fresh grass. Let's go, geese. Go, go, geese. Go, go, gadget geese links. Come on. You're doing so good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Look at that, look at all this fresh grass. Hey Pablo, how you doing buddy? There is a bounty of catnip for every rodent you bring to my doorstep. All right, now I'm gonna move our solar charger. So I can make sure that the geese don't try to escape. This thing is really lightweight, really portable. It's not the most intense electric shock in the world, but uh, it gets the job done. Pretty simple, right? You just connect the positive to these little spots, press the button. Generally when I do a fresh pasture move, I like to test the fence real quick just to make sure it's hot. Aye! It really is a magical world I live in. Check this out. Hey, 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 hey. Here you go. See, all good. Here we go. Now you can be happy in this little house. Get some fresh ground under your feet, fresh air, some bugs to poke at. It's all good. Up next, we're going to the dump. Oh, I got a little duck poop on me. So I guess I should probably change before I go to the dump. So while I was changing my shirt, Allison actually picked off a little tick off of me. You can see it right here. I try to check myself two or three times a day for ticks because there's just so gosh darn many of them. Um, and, and that helps keep away things like Lyme disease. Like I think a tick has to be in you for like at least 24 hours before it can pass Lyme disease. So uh, I'm careful. None of these look like deer ticks either. Um, kind of disgusting, but I have this whole collection of ticks that I just sort of keep in here. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess I probably should throw this out. It's kind of gross. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. To the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. I got something for you. All right. Put out your hand. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Princess punch. I figured that's what you want. One or the and other. Flower. Very nice. So uh, 
I had one trash, 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 trash bag. One trash bag. Was it a contractor bag? No, just like regular kitchen. A white bag? Yeah. Uh, uh, do I just press? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is not strong enough? I might not just be strong enough. Got it. There we go. Oh, little princess. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See you later, Amber. <laughs> Our dump just switched over to a uh, punch card system. Um, and so Amber had been complaining about how she didn't have a fancy stamp for punching out the card. So I found her one and got her a little princess stamp. So I got the first one. See? <laughs> So we got a couple good things in the mail here today. Step into my office and let me show you what I got. All right, magazine, 10% coupon, that's huge. Uh, bills, and this is actually the cool thing that I wanna show you guys. So I got a letter here. And this letter comes from Michael in Alabama. He had a suggestion of us reaching out to uh, these guys who have a TV show um, who take apart barns. Uh, Michael, thank you for the note. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys ever want to send us a note or anything, uh, our address is down below in the description. Feel free to send us notes. We, I love reading them. I love getting the feedback. Um, and I'm horrible at email, so uh, notes are awesome. The drums seem to beat in Laura's head. They seem to beat deep inside her. Yep. Morrison's feed bag. <laughs> All right, including. I, I don't want to be another person telling you what you shouldn't do. Including but, drive, yeah, drive the forklift. <laughs> it's like, do you it. think I'm gonna roll the forklift? We can drive right. to. All right, all right. Yeah, good times. Oh boy. I'll see see you later. We scored some free pallets. So I just stopped at the store to get some uh, household items, you know, the really boring type of stuff. Um, unfortunately, I'm starting to look at the weather. It looks like it might rain again. I hope I can get back to the farm before it does rain because I got all this feedback here and I really don't want it to get wet. This is going to be dicey. So I've made it back to the farm and it still hasn't started raining. It looks like it could start raining pretty soon, but uh, I was very fortunate. At this point in the day, I am starving. And so now I'm gonna work on my construction project. You can see some of the supplies right there. I've been keeping this under wraps, so this will be a top secret project. So unfortunately, you guys, you won't be able to see me working on it. Sorry. Whew. So I've been uh, working here for the last couple of hours. Gotten a lot done. It's been some good progress this afternoon, but I got way, 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 way more to do. I'm gonna bring the animals in. It's a little earlier than I usually do it, but um, we are gonna be going uh, out tonight. So my cousin, he's a, he's a musician, and his band is touring, and it's actually not too far. It's, like, he lives in uh, the Pacific Northwest, so it's, relatively speaking, it's very close. It's uh, just down in Massachusetts. It's about a two hour drive, so, uh, we're gonna pack everything up, head down south, grab a bite to eat along the way, and uh, hang out and go see my cousin's show. But first, I gotta bring in the animals. What are you two doing in here? 
Hey, ducks. Duck, duck, ducks. Where are the ducks, geeselings? It's always so hard to find them when the grass is this high. Usually they respond though when I yell. Hey, ducks. Hey, ducks. Hey, hey, ducks. Hey, hey, ducks. Oh, I hear them. Hey, hey, ducks. Where are you, ducks? Come on. Hey, ducks. All ducks, go to bed. All ducks, go to bed. This one that's the slowest, she's been injured from a mink attack. Never quite recovered well. There we go. All ducks, go to bed. Everybody's here. Back off, everybody. Back off. I like to try to keep them so that the injured one gets a little bit of food before everybody else. Let's see how this goes. I've been trying to train them to go in at night. Um, it's a little more complicated than the ducks. Good night, geese. Good night, geese. There we go. All right, 16 in that one. The rest of you guys are going in the other one. Come on, let's go.
Just got back to the farm. And I'm just kind of doing my nightly rounds. A lot of times, I like to check on the farm right before I go to bed. It puts my mind at ease. Check to make sure the fences are hot. Check to make sure everybody's locked up properly. Everything looks clear, huh, Lil? Come on, sweetheart. Let's go back to the house.